I want to do, can we do this fact check thing together before Malika has to go? Because this is just, she needs to be part of this. First of all, being a fact checker is an innately lame thing. You're a cuck. Sad. It's not good. I'm stalling for time, Malika. Not it's very, it's it's not good. It's bad. not not good for you. A not good thing. A, a very not, not a very not good thing. Thank you. One of the worst things that happened. I mean, after. honestly, though, who is that person in college or whatever who's like, nah, 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 quibble about your facts? Honestly, shut the fuck up. Honestly, isn't that what Twitter is? Like, it's a bunch of nerds like arguing with each other. Yeah, about but things. that's why Twitter. Su but it's better when people. But that's why it's. See, the two bad poles of Twitter are people either making like hysterical moralizing statements or fact checking, and everything else that aren't those two poles can be good. <laughs> <laughs> but when people are like, I can't believe that, ah, that sucks. Or like, I, I have a quibble with, <laughs> nye, 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 nye. I, I, I could see I myself being a fact checker. I'm just throwing that out there. I could uh, like, uh, I could probably dig it. Believe me, I've seen you doing some fact checking. Malika. Exactly. I didn't want to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? To, to be, just to keep it real, sometimes, yes. You definitely have a dangerous tendency towards fact checking. That's true. <laughs> but at the same time, dangerous, dangerous, and not good. <laughs> but you, but you, but you contextualize your fact checking, mm -hmm. right? That no, that honestly is the difference. If you're gonna point out an error, make it be part of a fucking point you're making, other than like yeah, nah, just nah, pe country. pedantic, nah, yeah, nah, 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 nah. pedantic. Pedantic is the word of the day. Like. Yeah. AOC, first of all, like AOC on concentration camps. We've talked about this a million times. Number one, she's right. That literally is the definition of concentration camp. And number two, like, why are you the one that wants to debate what we're calling what we put children after they've been kidnapped in cages and they're dying in right now? Like, yeah. if that's your go-to place, you suck. Yeah. I feel like that's like like one of those I'm not a racist but arguments. It's like you actually don't care about this. I you know I don't want to be devil's advocate, but you are. Like I don't want to quibble, except. Yeah, no, exactly. No, that that would be the like. There's a national crisis in policing, and you know what? If you're actually like devising policy, you right. you do need to actually have a lot of precision. True. But if you're the one who's like sliding in and just like, well, I actually heard that before this guy was shot that he was listening to Lil Yachty and the cop had actually had PTSD and then, and you're just like, why are you yeah. doing, why are you throwing all this nuts? So yeah. anyways, yeah. speaking of which, Bernie oh, well, Sanders, and, and this is global too. Every year Oxfam puts out a new stat about some fraction of the global population owning some astronomical amount of the wealth. And this is, and Bernie Sanders said, three people in this country own more wealth than the bottom half of America. By the way, the best tweet he had in the last couple of days was something to the effect of like, people keep accusing me of saying the same thing again and again. I'll write a new speech when we get rid of wealth inequality. And I was like, that's what it is right there. That's beautiful. He's like, I'll come up with something novel when we actually take care of this. You, that's, imagine that. Just as a brief digression, that's like it's such an incredible, like, he keeps saying the same thing. <laughs> what the fuck is the matter with people? Like, solve the problem. Okay, and this is Glenn Kessler in the Washington Post with an actual response in the sense that this is literally something he wrote and put out into the world. This snappy talking point is based on numbers that don't add up. But it's also a question is based on numbers that add up, excuse me. He acknowledges out of the gate. So at this <laughs> point, and Malika, yes. you have a big inner fact checker. <laughs> so if you've said that this talking point is based on numbers that add up, could you just put a period there and be done with the fact check? This fact checker says yes. <laughs> this fact checker says, the official TMBS fact checker, Malika Jabali, has given this a clean bill of health. But it's also a question of comparing apples to oranges. Now, Malika, I mean, I know you already know because this is on screen, but mm -hmm. what, like, where could this possibly be going? <laughs> like, what does this mean? Okay. Sorry, what was it, Matt? I got another one. 
Okay, we have another one. Sanders is drawing on a 2017 report from the Left Leaning Institute for Policy Studies. And I, honestly, like, I really want to know how you interpret what he's doing here because I don't know. Mm -hmm. 2017 report from the Left Leaning Institute for Policy Studies, which said that three billionaires, Bill Gates, uh, Jeff Bezos, who owns the Washington Post, oh, thank you huh. so much for the disclosure, and Warren, believe me, I can tell. And Warren Buffett had a total wealth of uh, $248.5 billion compared to $245 billion for the bottom $160 million of the United States. The wealth of the three men had gone up more even since, had gone up uh, even more since then. But people, in the bottom, but people in the bottom half have essentially no wealth as debt cancels out whatever assets they might have. So the comparison is not especially meaningful. My first response is, is like, oh, so it's even worse than what Bernie said. Right. What is he trying to say? I'm, honestly, what the fuck is he trying to say? Who is this guy first? I feel like this that would a, help me. Is, I, he's a fact checker. Well, this is the official Washington Post fact checker, Glenn Kessler. Which as much as we think that this is a joke and a total embarrassment of a profession, that's a pretty prestigious slot. Everything up until that last sentence is like fine. So I don't understand why he would say it's not particularly mean, especially meaningful. Meaningful to who and for for what? Like yeah. he's still making the same point we all would have gotten out of this. So I don't, I don't know. Well, Matt has a really disturbing interpretation of this. I think what he means is like, let's say you have uh, like eighty thousand dollars in student loan debt. I think he thinks that should count towards your total wealth, at, so it divides into the so so it seems like it's less big of a disparity because people have invested into their minds, or you could have housing debt and stuff like that. So I think he wants to count debt as part of your asset. So he wants to make the student loans that people are completely getting gutted by like over a trillion dollars. Society's in already invested in those students. As a net positive, because you've like created a marketable skill for yourself, is that really what you interpret him as saying? That's honestly what I think it is. But there's uh, a then worse. Why one. wouldn't he say that? I mean, a that still is silly because debt is debt. Nobody wants that debt. Nobody, Nobody wants a mortgage. Nobody wants debt. Nobody wants a student loan debt. Like they don't feel like it's paying. And and if you go down that route, how are we going to determine what's paying for what? Do you like, have debt? That's a very do I? <laughs> yeah. I, well, look, I'm okay. Do All of us in this room definitely have a like. Cumulatively, that I'm sure in this room, our shared student debt would wipe out all of our shared assets. Yeah. I would pretty confidently predict we, that. I'd be in the 1% if we <laughs> <laughs> if we started to add this towards my assets. Oh, we really got to get Bernie's plan in place. We got to get you in the 1%. But what, so does anybody, when you read Glenn Kessler's reframe, do you feel all, because I'm just sitting here, I'm like, you know what? I don't feel like I'm drowning in that bullshit anymore. I feel like it's actually a big advantage. Hell yeah. It's great that I'm tens of thousands of dollars in college that I never looked at it that way. This before. one from a couple this weeks ago. It's like reading The Secret. All right, what's this one's the next worse. one? So uh, Bernie's, Bernie's <laughs> uh, claim was millions of Americans are forced to work uh, two or three jobs just to survive. Here comes Glenn Kessler. And uh, I'm going to move this up <laughs> so I can read this out here. Okay. Uh, Glenn writes, uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics data shows that nearly 8 million people hold more than one job. But most of those extra jobs are part-time, not full-time. And the millions of jobs... Uh, amount to just 5% of Americans with jobs. So that means just 95% of workers are not working two or three jobs just to, uh, just to survive, making this a misleading statement. So 8 million, <laughs> what don't call that millions. <laughs> <laughs> That's a skill, man. Honestly, to be able to distort a very clear claim from Bernie Sanders <laughs> into whatever that paragraph That's his job. Was. No, but honestly, I know I always go to being sarcastic, so I'll call this guy an idiot and a cuck all day. But call him a liar. Like, you're an attorney and a liar. You're an attorney. Like what? I don't understand what he's saying. Like it needs that kind of forensic training. What does that mean? What do you, What does what mean? He literally just says, "Okay, I looked at the data. It's true, mm -hmm. but a lot of them are." Part time, so it's not true. Like, like, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> like you. That's I like, don't know why that's mis. I don't know what any how any of that is misleading. It's like you, it's not mis. I don't know what's misleading. It's a small millions. It's Eight, literally. It's, it's like you got a job. <laughs> no, let's like let's let's make this. Let's let's be like a school teacher about this. Like, uh, Tom got a job at Foot Locker. They wouldn't give him full time hours. So he walked, walked to another store in the mall and got hired at Aldo. So he got two jobs to pay his bills. 
that's what Bernie's saying. Like, well, I don't. I, I, and who's working I'm literally two mystified. Who's working two full time jobs? Like, that's not typically how it works. That is not typically how. Well, uh, probably people with two, with Amazon shifts are working two full time jobs. And that's not even considered full time. Like, because they, even, they right. structure it in a way where it's a temporary part time job. Right. Which is another reason that Bernie could be being super conservative when he actually makes this claim. I think the point is if you're giving your money to the Washington Post, you should stop. Cancel that. Cancel and, it. Uh, redirect that money elsewhere. Absolutely. It's like, going to this guy's salary. To it's going to, yeah. What could be patronizing this show <laughs> is going to Glenn Kessler's Jeff salary. Jeff Bezos can kick, up, kick in a few more dollars if he wants yeah, to. Yeah, believe me. Jeff, Jeff Bezos can keep uh, Kessler fed while he... I don't even know. I, I mean, it is lying, but it's just so bizarre. You've just watched a Michael Brooks show video, and you can watch all of our full main live shows every Tuesday night at around 7 p.m. Eastern time, and subscribe to get all of the clips you want. We're covering the globe. We're focusing on international relations, the intellectual dark web. We're having fun. We're doing deep dives with a lot of amazing guests. Of course, become a patron for the whole thing at patreon.com slash TMBS, or subscribe to this YouTube channel and help us keep growing and get that content out there. Subscribe below.